When it comes to recovering from an ACL surgery, selecting the right ACL graft can be crucial for successful outcomes. And with various graft options available, patients must weigh the pros and cons of each to determine the best fit based on their individual needs. That's why in this video, I'll be comparing the most common graft types, covering each of their advantages and disadvantages to determine which graft is best. <laughs> But before we dive into the details of each graft type, we must first distinguish between the two primary groups of grafts utilized in ACL surgery, allografts and autografts. Allografts involve using donor tissue from a cadaver, while autografts utilize the patient's own tissues. Within each group, there are different types of tissues that can be utilized. And for the purpose of this video, we will be focusing on the most used grafts for ACL reconstruction. And to compare each of these graphs effectively, I'll be scoring them based on four key criteria. Patient reported outcomes, common post-surgical complications, return to sport rates, and re-rupture risk. So stick around until the end where we reveal which one comes out on top. When it comes to ACL reconstruction, the patient's ability to return to their prior level of function is one of the key essential outcomes. After all, if you're unable to get back to your prior level of function, what was the point of the surgery in the first place? Well, the good news is, is that the current research shows no significant differences in patient reported outcomes between quadriceps tendon and bone patella tendon bone autografts. In studies comparing bone patella tendon bone autografts to hamstring tendon autografts and allografts, also show no significant differences in patient reported outcomes. So the choice of graft type may depend more on individual patient needs and preferences than differences in outcomes. For this reason, all grafts get a point for this category, so we are all tied up. As mentioned, one of the primary issues after ACL surgery is persistent weakness due to graft site harvesting. Normal knee strength after ACL reconstruction is considered greater than 90% strength compared to the uninjured knee which is an essential milestone for safe return to sports and more intensive work. Insufficient strength can lead to poor function, altered biomechanics, and a higher risk of knee injuries. When comparing quadriceps tendon to bone patella tendon bone and hamstring tendon autografts, research shows significant quadriceps weakness after both bone patella tendon bone and quadriceps tendon reconstructions, which can linger years after surgery if not properly managed during rehab. Similarly, post-operative hamstring weakness is common in those who receive a hamstring tendon autograph. And what's interesting is that a recent study found a difference in the type of strength improvement in patients who underwent ACL reconstruction. Specifically, it found that while the maximal force that one can generate improved over time through strengthening exercises, explosive strength or the ability to generate force quickly did not show the same improvement. This suggests that specific training is indicated to restore explosive strength, which of course is essential for sports. For this reason, no points will be given to any type of autograph due to the challenges that patients can have regaining strength after ACL surgery. Anterior knee pain and kneeling pain are another common post-operative complication linked to graft choice. Patients who receive a bone patella tendon bone autograft experience a higher incidence of post-operative anterior knee pain compared to all other graft choices, being found to be as high as 72%. This is compared to 44% of those who receive a hamstring tendon autograft and 9% of those who receive a quadriceps tendon autograft. This can be an issue with rehab as anterior knee pain with certain exercises can slow down recovery. This is also a major consideration for anyone that needs to kneel a lot for work. For this reason, I'm going to give one point to both the hamstring tendon and quadriceps tendon autografts due to their reduced risk for anterior knee pain. And because allografts don't come with any risk of donor site pain or muscle weakness after surgery, I'm going to give them two points. However, due to the allografts increased risk of infection and graft rejection, I'm also going to dock it one point. No points will be awarded to the bone patella tendon bone autograph due to the increased risk of anterior knee pain. Return to sport after ACL reconstruction is another key outcome measure, with studies showing an overall return to sport rate of 82% for those who receive an ACL surgery. But this seems to drop to 63% for return to sport at the same level, 
So people are getting back to sport at a high rate, but less of them are able to get back to where they were before they got injured. When it comes to return to sport rates for different graph types, studies generally indicate no significant difference between autographs. However, there are some studies suggesting lower return to sport for those who receive an allograft compared to autographs and athletes who play the same sport. However, returning to sport is one thing, but it's also crucial to consider how fast athletes can recover after surgery, as most aim to resume playing as quickly as possible. A study investigated the time it took for individuals who receive an ACL reconstruction to achieve specific rehabilitation milestones, such as strength, functional performance, and perceived ability levels through subjective questionnaires. The findings revealed that those who received a bone patella tendon bone autograph took one and a half months longer than the hamstring tendon group and two and a half months longer than the allograft group to reach the same clinical milestones. This delay in bone patella tendon bone group was linked to slower recovery of knee range of motion, prolonged swelling, and the time needed to regain quadriceps strength. The bone patella tendon bone group did not meet this criteria to return to sport until over 10 months post-surgery, whereas the allograft and hamstring tendon groups met these criteria at 6.5 and, and 7.5 and months post-surgery, respectively. While the slower recovery in the bone patella tendon bone group may seem like a significant drawback, it is important to highlight that physical function is only one aspect of recovery. The healing of the graft itself has been shown to be a major factor in determining readiness to return to sport. It is estimated that up to 25% of all athletes experience a second ACL tear after returning to sport, with the majority of those injuries occurring in those who return to sport within 9 months post-reconstruction, regardless of physical performance measures. So that means no matter how strong a person is, or how well they are moving, graft healing significantly influences the risk of re-injury. For this reason, even though those who receive a bone patella tendon bone graft may progress at a slower rate, they actually may have a reduced risk of re-injury compared to those who receive an allograft or hamstring tendon autograft, as they are more likely to return to sport later. So considering the rate of recovery and the research indicating that athletes should not return to sport before 9 months regardless of their strength or movement quality, the type of graft used does not significantly impact the rate or likelihood of returning to sport. So each graft type earns 1 point. Bone patella tendon bone autographs have long been considered the gold standard due to the lower re-rupture rates compared to hamstring tendon autographs and allografts. Recent research suggests that quadriceps tendon grafts have similar low failure rates to bone patella tendon bone autographs. On the other hand, patients who receive a hamstring autograph face up to two times higher risk of re-rupture, especially among young and active individuals. Allografts present an even higher risk of re-rupture. Research indicates significantly elevated rates of re-rupture in athletes undergoing ACL reconstruction with allografts compared to autografts. Several factors contribute to these higher rates, including compromised structural integrity due to the sterilization process and slower healing times. The risk of re-rupture is notably higher in younger populations, with individuals under 30 experiencing rates of 3 to 5 times greater than those with autographs. In particular, a study focusing on those under 18 found a 15 times higher failure rate in the allograft group, all within the first year after reconstruction. However, there seems to be no significant difference in re-rupture rates among individuals in their mid-30s or older. Ultimately, autographs are the preferred choice for younger, more active individuals, especially those in high-impact sports or demanding occupations. Utilizing the patient's own tissue offers advantages such as faster and stronger healing, making them ideal for those looking to return to strenuous physical activity. Allographs are typically recommended for older patients or individuals not planning to resume sports or engage in vigorous work due to their higher re-rupture rates. So I'll award two points to both the bone patella tendon bone and quadriceps tendon autographs, as they have the lowest risk of re-rupture among graft options for both athletic and non-athletic individuals. The hamstring tendon graft will receive one point because they also generally have low risk of re-rupture, though there is a slightly increased risk compared to bone patella tendon bone and quadriceps tendon grafts. No points will be awarded to the allograft group due to the higher failure rates, especially in individuals participating in higher level activities. Considering these factors, the quadriceps tendon autograft emerges as a top choice for ACL grafts. However, the best option ultimately depends on your personal goals and the demands of your sport or work.
A quadriceps tendon or bone patella tendon bone graft may suit an athlete who needs to maintain hamstring strength for explosive power when running or jumping, while a hamstring graft may be preferable for individuals who frequently kneel, such as wrestlers or mechanics. On the other hand, allografts are more suitable for older individuals with lower physical demands due to reduced post-surgical pain and muscle strength loss, but younger, more physically active patients should avoid them due to the higher failure rates. Overall, evidence suggests that all graft options offer similar rates of returning to pre-injury levels of activity, excellent functional outcomes, and relatively low risk of long-term complications. Well, what are your thoughts? Do you have any experience with ACL rehab or recovery? Feel free to share your comments below. And if you found this video valuable, don't forget to give it a like so it can spread and help more people like you. And as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so, so you can stay up to date on everything you need to know about your body, how it works, and what it needs to keep moving.